shout out to these key words. Trust, respect, willingness. These are some of the words that are as our points of references in this episode of Point of View series. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Point of View series. Today is our 27th episode. And the Point of View is a live online talk show where we invite guests to share their knowledge, experiences, wisdom, or perspective with our audience. The purpose of the set, this session is to enlighten each other and hopefully along the line of getting the light bulb moment that perhaps we all could act upon for the betterment of ourselves and also others. My name is Jacqueline Joannis. I'll be hosting the session, but I'm not the only host as usual. My friend, Sheikh Omar, to also host the session. And as you can see on your screen, with, here with us today, we are honored to have Martin. I'll go by first name, apart <laughs> from because I'm not sure how to pronounce his full name, although I've known him for many years. Right? But uh, thank you so much, Martin. You're welcome. That, uh, that you have agreed to spend an hour of your precious Friday with us at POV. And to our viewers, thank you so much for your support. Uh, to our live viewers, thank you for dropping by. We hope that however long that you choose to be part of this, ses this session, you'll gain something out of it. So talking about gaining in this context, it's really about learning something out of our sharing. And I believe it works in two ways. Apart from watching or listening to us, it will be much more effective if you can ask questions and also be part of the discussion by you typing in your comments or your opinion in the comment section. So therefore, I would like to encourage all of you, our viewers, to do that. And which means either by private message or during live, uh, anytime, yeah, anytime during live, um, and also if you're watching the recording, because this video will be on my Facebook wall until Facebook decide not to. And as usual, without further ado, let's introduce ourselves. Omar, Martin and I are corporate trainers, coaches, mentors and or speakers in our own specialization. So let's hear from you about yourself. So let's start with uh, Omar. Hi everybody, I'm Omar. Welcome back to the show. Uh, for those who have been following us, uh, for those who are new, welcome. Um, okay, so I call myself a conversation coach uh, simply because I, um, I pay a lot of attention to how people communicate. That's, that's my, I, I think I can uh, call it my area of interest. Uh, and the motivation for that is uh, when I was in corporate, I realized that a lot of the problems or a lot of the issues that people have were related to communication. Uh, I was an IT guy, but uh, you, you know, you won't believe how much communication uh, has a lot to do with solving IT problems. The, 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 the lesser problem was the technical problem. The bigger problem was communication. And so today, uh, one of the things that I do is I help people gain confidence in conversations, in communication. And I also help people to articulate ideas better or how to communicate better. So um, let me pass this on to Martin. Great. Thanks for having me, by the way. So my name is Maarten van Rijn. Uh, a little bit hard to pronounce. You can speak uh, or uh, pronounce uh, Rijn as Rijn, more the English way. Uh, so for those who haven't uh, found out that I'm Dutch, but I've been here for about nine years already. Um, my background is also, just like Jacqueline described, corporate. And uh, when I arrived here nine years ago, um, I had a short corporate stint in, uh, in a consulting company. And um, that sort of showed me uh, the challenges that I had with the corporate culture. So that set me on a journey. I, uh, and then very quickly I turned coach because I felt that I had to help people move to be understanding themselves better. But in reality, I was helping myself understand myself better. Um, so I, I guess I still do that, but I've now found a bit of a niche uh, in a, a company called Ideascape. And uh, as, a, as a, 
uh, Dreamscape is a brand agency, but really we're transitioning to a completely different way of helping businesses, which is um, connecting yourself to something more than just making money. Uh, we call that profitable purpose. And so we want businesses to be uh, embracing not just uh, what they do well, but also why they're doing it. And um, this is where my coaching skills do come in. So yes, I'm a coach, but I call myself a transition, uh, a transformation consultant right now. It may change um, because we're all transforming all the time. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Right. Thanks, Martin. Yes, I've known Martin for many years now. In fact, I uh, start, we got to know each other um, in a business networking group. And I've also decided to be one of Martin coaches. So I, I, I was like um, his coachee for quite some time before um, we are both now. Um, sometimes we collaborate in, uh, in a project. Yeah. So uh, for me, profession wise, for 13 years, I work in learning and development uh, unit in a few companies. I started at uh, MSC status company, followed by two multinational companies. And I left my nine to five job and embarked into 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. job. In 2013, I uh, founded a company called Professional Advancements Resources and an academy called Asia Image Development Academy or AIDA. My area of focus is image consultancy, personal and professional growth and development. 70% of my business comes from corporate training and the rest is on one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. In this 27th episode of POV, we are going to zoom into a very interesting topic. And I think it's really relevant to the situation that we are facing at this point of time. Renew your business by building meaningful connection. Without further ado, I hand over handle to Omar. Omar? Okay. <clears throat> well, you know, I've known Jack for uh, what, 10 years now, Jack? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. But, yeah, I but think initially, I, I, you know, we, we run into each other during in the workshops and stuff like that. But over time, as I got to know Jack, she was always doing stuff. You know, she was into um, talk shows and radio shows and uh, in, uh, in organizing things, getting all kinds of um, involvements and communities and all kinds of activities. And so one day I asked her, Jack, how come you're doing so many things? And um, to put it simply, she said, well, I have a coach. <laughs> and I said, you have a coach? Yeah. And she says, uh, you know, in the beginning, she wasn't really letting me on who her coach was. But I think I asked her a few times and finally she says, uh, look, if you're really interested, um, let me talk to my coach, see if he wants to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think uh, at that time, uh, Martin, uh, you probably don't know this story, Martin. And at that time you were overseas, I think, that you could have been on holiday. And uh, Jack says, um, well, he's away now, but when he comes back, I'll, I'll speak to him. And so that's how I got to know Martin. So for a short while, um, I was, uh, I had the opportunity to be coached by Martin. It wasn't a very long um, period of time, but um, what I got out of it was that uh, I, I had so many things in my head. I had, well, I, well, I wanted to do so many things and I was trying to, uh, you know, I was like in the ocean dropping water. And um, what I got out of the coaching was the fact that I, I had to take things piecemeal. You know, I still remember, uh, when, I, when Martin asked me, so how many people are you going to call? It's, it's about sales, right? And I said, well, okay, I've got uh, 50 people on my list, blah, 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 all kinds of stuff. And Martin says, no, 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 one, just one, just call one. <laughs> and it made an impact. You know, so um, I know this is, a, this is a, a common advice in sales, but um, I think what Martin was able to do was to, to get a sense of um, how I was... Uh, how my energy was, how I was feeling, and, um, and then bring it down to what was real for me. Uh, and things actually happened, uh, you know, uh, Martin. So uh, you didn't get too much business out of me because things worked. 
<laughs> very, very quickly. That's, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. yeah, things will work very quickly. But it made an impact, yeah, and I've moved on from there. Uh, but I never forgot that. I've always, um, whenever I'm, um, I'm flooded with uh, too many things to do, I always scale myself down and say, what is the next one thing that you can, you can do? And I've always focused on that. So you probably don't know this, Martin, because we've, uh, we've not you know, kept in touch for uh, a number of, uh, quite, quite a while, but that has stayed with me. Yeah. Okay. So today, um, we're going to hear more from Martin. Uh, he's talking about building, building meaningful connections. So let me pass it over to Martin and let's hear what you have to say. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, lovely to hear, Omar, uh, that you still keep things with you because that's, you know, that's, I mean, the, the funny thing about being a coach is that very often you don't really hear about that, right? You, you send someone off and you think they're doing well, uh, but you don't really know. Uh, sometimes you hear back and then it fills your heart. So yeah, meaningful connections. It's something that I coined only early this year. So it's, it's re relatively new. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation of where it came from. And then I'll tell you more about what it really is all about. And, and feel free, free to interject uh, with questions or, or comments or how you see the world. Because it might make my story a little bit better too. Um, and I, when I was thinking of having this topic or this conversation earlier, uh, when Jacqueline invited me, I was like, so why did I start with meaningful connections in the first place? Like, why, why am I doing this? And, and is this the first time? And then I had to think back as a kid or as a young adult, I have to say, I, um, I, I always won. I always felt a little bit different. I felt like I was not the same as anyone else. And you, some of the audience may connect with that. Uh, I felt like I was not the same. And uh, um, uh, early on, I was bullied as well in school. It didn't give me a very good feeling. But eventually, you do something with it. And um, what I decided, I guess, unconsciously to do with that is to pay attention to people one on one. And a very funny scenario that happened several times is that uh, I would go clubbing with my friends and my friends would all spend their time on the dance floor and I would sit on the side of the dance floor with one of their girlfriends talking about <laughs> all the challenges that they were facing in their life. Um, and nowadays I realize like, yes, I, I had that need to make connection with people, meaningful connections, not just talk, uh so rubbish which is, i mean there's a place for rubbish gone there's, there's there's times where you talk rubbish but i really get a lot of sense of gratitude and, and, and gratification out of seeing people grow and, and getting to to the next level so this has been with me for quite some time and um and so whatever i turn into i always go back to knowing what it is about other people that i grow so why did I come up with one meaningful connections now? Why did I coin the phrase? Um, this really has to do with something that we discovered last year. We were looking to reposition our brand Ideascape. And at the time we were just there for businesses to build their brand. And, and the question for us was, is that if that's what's, what it's all about? And we actually knew that, that it wasn't, but then how do we move forward? How do we set ourselves apart and what are we all about? And in that process, I pulled out a set of cards from my drawer that I had been hiding in my drawer for about six years. And I'll just show you, this is the set of cards. It's called 23 plus one. I have that too. Yeah, I see Jacqueline has it too. So we may play, with, play around with it later on. Uh, and just to very briefly show you, it's a set of 24 cards all with nice pictures on it and they connect you very quickly to your emotional side to your so to what is really meaningful and powerful to yourself so i pulled out this deck of cards and threw them on the table and i said why don't we just pull out the cards for our, for our business let's just put it down on paper and that really started us on the journey of becoming uh, what is now what we coin now as um, a profit with purpose. And the purpose is really adding meaning to our lives. 
So really, when I draw back to it, um, everyone here, everyone on this planet is here for one reason only, to add more meaning. Ah, actually, what some people would call um, be happy or create happiness. Yeah? So um, you see, and, and this is where, if you look at the, the, the world today, you see a lot of things that you could coin as challenging, not going in the right direction. Um, if you look at businesses, for example, and this is what we ran into, uh, they would say internally, they would say, look, people are not uh, staying with us long enough. Um, you know, people are leaving the business really quickly. Um, there's no focus anymore by the young generation. They're everywhere. They think that they can be all that right away. Um, and, and they want to add meaning right away, but how? Um, and on the other side, so this is internally in brands. And what, what we also noticed externally is that customer loyalty was going down. More demand for transparency from companies. Um, the internet, you know, everything you say or anyone says, it goes around so quickly that if you don't know what you're all about, uh, your answer is going to be really challenging. So looking at that and knowing what I know about people, I started to realize that we need to build more my meaningful connections. And uh, this has set me on a journey. Right now I'm working on uh, de de developing a framework on how to get businesses and individuals to get closer to what is meaningful to them and what builds better connections. So hearing from you, Martin, so building meaningful connection or finding meaning in, in, in the, the area that you are doing or in whatever that you are doing in your life, this is actually, people are seeking the how, how to actually finding meaning, right? Mm. So in your profession, are you providing that, the how? Or how is that be working in your, in your profession? So that's an interesting question, Jacqueline. And the how, uh, I think someone has shared before on this channel, but I will share again. Let me see if I can draw that for you guys. Uh, Simon Sinek's uh, Golden Circle. Mm -hmm. you're, you're aware of that, I'm sure, but maybe not everyone is aware of that, so let me just draw it. Right. Um, and I hope my writing is readable. Yeah, so very quickly. Mm -hmm. right. So you see the how on the outside, right? The, the what is the circle in between there or lower, and then there's the why. Yeah, hold that on for a while, perhaps so that um, because I've enlarged the screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you have to say something, Martin. So that it'll okay, be... yeah, I'll continue speaking. So uh, the question that you're asking, um, Jacqueline, is about the how. And for many people, that is actually the very easy part. How do you do what you do? Uh, because we've all got experience in, in, you know, some life experience, the things that we do really well. Uh, like uh, Omar just said, he's great at uh, translating what people do. That's the how, right? That's the, that's the easiest part. Then the what we do is a little bit hard, but most people can still figure out what they do. Like you're a coach, you're a trainer, maybe you're a consultant, maybe you're something different. And I'm going to warn you up front, I have a crying baby in the back, so we may get a little disturbed, yeah? Um, so... The how, the what, pretty easy. Why we do what we do is very challenging for people. And if you do not exactly know why you do what you do, the what and the how become uh, very uh, easy to shift because you kind of flow with whatever you think you're doing. Um, whereas when you know why you do what you do, the what and the how will easily fall in place. Even better, in a situation like COVID right now, it becomes very easy to pivot because if you know what you're all about, why you do what you do, it doesn't really matter how you do it or what you're doing because your message needs to get out. Your why needs to be ticked all the time. So sometimes you see people pivot really quickly and you wonder how can they do that, but they know exactly what they're, you know, what they're all about, why they're doing what they're doing. And, and 
you know, so the, your wine makes it so easy. Right. Uh, I, I can give a... you an example, actually, of that. Right. Uh, yeah, I just, sure. I just found that interesting. I'm sure you know the story of Kodak, right? Yeah. So Kodak didn't know exactly why they were doing what they were doing. Uh, they did know what they were doing, which was building photography things, and uh, how they were doing that. They also knew they had a very good process, but they didn't know why. So when they had to pivot, uh, it was too late. They thought they could do digital, but they thought they could own the space. That never happened because digital became everywhere and they lost the space. Fuji film, however, pivoted around something that they do really well, which is color pigments. So Fuji film also had the same challenge, but they went back to what they're all about. And what they're all about is doing pigmenting really well. So they went into cosmetics. Right. And they're, I, they're pretty big in cosmetics right now. I have a question yeah. before you move yeah. on, Martin, because this is really always my curiosity when it comes to this subject um, of why, because it seems like this is a very simple, um, simple part of our life to really understand how can you find meaning in what you do is it's to go back to your why but that's on the theory part of it or the the logic part of it but really if you really think about understanding why not everyone like exactly what you mentioned just now some huge organization they can't even find or i don't know i don't know whether it's they can't or they they didn't have the realization but why is it so difficult to find the why but or that's rather challenging to yeah. find. What do you yeah. think? Why do you think? It is because we are obsessed with the how, I feel. Mm -hmm. Like we really want to share people what we do and how we do it. Um, I do think it's pretty hard to find your why. It's a journey. It's the journey of life, I would almost say, for every one of us. And for businesses, it's even harder because businesses sometimes consist of thousands of employees. So your why is very hard to put back to one single thing, unless you ask everyone, which is what we can do, by the way. Um, but um, yeah, just to find your why is a journey. So if you look at Simon Sinek, what he does is he goes back into your history. What have you always been doing? And if you remember how I started today, I've always been listening to people one-on-one -on -one really well. I never thought it was a skill that I had. It was just something that I did. And I realized that that gives me gratitude. So, I, I, yeah, gratification, I have to say, not gratitude. Yeah, I'd like to, to share with the audience that when I was um, Martin Kochi, we went around KL um, to ask people randomly about the certain questions to really find out their why. Can you believe, like, we just stopped anyone at the LRT station? I remember we were walking around brick fields, like, that's scary, under, right? Yeah, under the sun and really like asking people randomly about a few questions that are basically for us to collect some answers to find out, um, you know, the why. So again, I totally agree when you say it's a journey and it, it requires a lot of courage, really, to have this to have this um, determination yeah, to really find out the why. So, so they, yeah. did people tell you what their why's were? Did they know what their why's were? Well, it wasn't really like, what's your why? We were asking questions such as, why do you like your job? Right, Martin? Yeah. yeah we were asking yeah. those kind of, it wasn't like really straightforward why? asking Meaning what of you life. Want. No, yeah. because no one will know that. But um, Martin gave me a few questions. And, um, you know, we just stop people. Can you believe that? That's really... A... I still remember that some people just answered, yeah, because they pay good money. Yeah. And others were really like, I'm really not sure why I'm here. It was a very big um, yeah. space of answers. Yeah, it was a very fun time. You know, I think uh, people like people like us who are independent, uh, um, independent uh, income earners, uh, we... Uh, we've we've taken the the, uh, the risk of uh, being uh, of instead of being employed with a steady income, we've taken the risk of being on our own. Uh, but the payoff is that we're able to pursue stuff that we want to do. You know, so we are fortunate to be able to get closer to 
uh, to the why of what we're doing. But for most people out there, uh, their life is um, directed by what the norms of society is. You know, you go to school, you get a job, uh, and then you work. I mean, you build a career. Uh, so for most of these people, uh, the why only gets to the level of, well, this gives, this gives me an income. Yeah. Uh, but after a while, you know, they, re they realize that, hey, income is just not meaningful enough. Right? In fact, I was just with a friend uh, who, was a, who had a very successful career uh, overseas. She just she came back a few years ago. I just caught up with her. And she said she had it all. She had the uh, uh, corporate expenses, uh, uh, you know, um, jet flights, flying on jet planes and uh, everything paid for, all kinds of stuff. But there was still no meaning. You know, so she decided to just quit and come back home and figure out what she wants to do. Uh, yeah, so for most people, they, they're doing stuff uh, automatically and then they get caught up in the ritual of going to work and earning the money. And their why is as, uh, is as uh, I, would, I don't want to use the word superficial, but it doesn't get deep enough. The why is it to the level of, I need to earn this money because I, I got to send my kids for, uh, you know, for, for the education or private school or whatever it is. So they actually look for a reason. So the reason is not intrinsic. It's not, it's not something that uh, really resonates with the being. It's just a, just a reason to exist. So for these people, how do you, how can they find a why? How can they find their whys? You know, because uh, like, like I said, we, we're kind of fortunate because we took, uh, you know, we, uh, we took the plunge. We, uh, we paid dearly for it for some of us, uh, yeah. but we, uh, we, we're pretty much in tune with what we like to do, uh, mm. uh, you know, and that becomes more meaningful but for, for others who are stuck in the daily, in the daily jobs. How do they get out of it? What, a very what, good what's question. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's a couple of answers to your question, Omar. Uh, a couple of things that I, I mean, if you just look at human beings, right? The one thing that we all want to do is avoid being hurt. That's one thing that is so deeply ingrained in us. We, we don't like to get hurt. Now, if you start questioning what you're doing and why you're doing things, you may find answers that are not very, very pleasant to hear because it confronts the image that you've created of yourself. So if that image is, is broken down, that, that can be very painful. So we try to avoid it. So that's this one side of the coin. Um, what I realized that I have been doing since a certain time, certainly when I came to Malaysia, is I was always questioning why am I doing this? And does that make me happy? And the other question I asked, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And when I was in the, the corporate job that I accepted here in Malaysia, uh, I just found myself doing things that didn't tick that box. I did not want to be doing that for the rest of my life. So eventually I was like, okay, so if I constantly say, no, this is not what I want for the rest of my life, then what is the next question? Can I create something here that I do want to do for the rest of my life? And the answer was not a very positive one. At least I couldn't see it. So then the question became, so then what am I doing here? So it is, if you never question yourself, then you are happy with the comfort zone that you have created for yourself. And that's okay. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that everyone has to find their why. I'm just saying that if you do it, then, um, you know, the world becomes a lot more meaningful and, and you become a little bit happier in the process too. So hearing from that explanation, Yamatan, so renew your business by building meaningful connections is really around also asking yourself, uh, asking yourself and asking, or rather asking around the business that you have around, um, to then will help you to find your why. So if, if, if the key here is asking questions, so what mm -hmm. sort of questions? Example. So, and that is a very good question indeed, Jacqueline. And this is, this is interesting. This is where my experience as a coach comes in, right? 
the questions that very often get, uh, get asked by people around us is why do we do that? Why is this? Um, and excuse me for, my, for the interruption. Um, why do you do what you do? But why sends us to one place in our head, which is trying to figure out what the answers are for us. But our head is a very manipulative tool. We can find out the answer to anything. We can create the answers if we have to. It will never get you to the point where you really start understanding what you're all about. So the answers that we need to be asking are what questions? And this is Omar, this is what you may have experienced. I hardly ask why questions to anyone because the why is just satisfying the brain up here, but it never satisfies the heart. But I do ask the what questions. So what is important right now? What is it that you really want to achieve? What do you want to get out of this? And you just saw that the questions that I ask myself are the what questions too. What if I'm here for the rest of my life? What can I add or how can I add value? The how question is also quite powerful at given times. Sometimes I do feel that Uma, I think you're you are like in the bubble, in the bubbling room. I think it's your your phone is having some friction, so you might want to adjust that. Is all right. Sorry for that. Okay, uh, Martin. Um, because but why I ask that questions? Um, every well, different coach will have. Uh, well, I mean, there's some similarity, but at the end of the day, it's really around finding the connection between your heart and your mind, your brain. Yes. Whether it has, well, for me, it's really, me personally, is whether it's stronger here and it's slightly acceptable here. If it's just mm. acceptable, it's okay, right? Yeah. But the most for me is how do I feel around my answers to my questions? So again, although I said earlier that the key is the questions, but at the end of the day, it's not really the words they use that you use to construct your questions, but your answers around you answering that question. Am I right to say that? I think that's a very good analysis, yes. And, and uh, do you think that you're, you're doing this one or are you doing that one, right? Are you, which one yeah, are you? And also finding some, some, some connection here, but yeah. it's not a, a full connection, but at least it's acceptable in my, in my brain. It's, 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 it's okay enough for me. Now, now, my next question is, what if in an organization, because there are many brains and many hearts, so how do you come up with, because our topic is really renewing your business, so if it's in a team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in a team, what you want to create is uh, conversations that are not just about the mind, and the mind, obviously, we're very good at the mind stuff. You know, you come in, what's the plan? What's the actions that we, that we need to do? That's, that's stuff that we throw out quite easily, most of us at least. But what's not so easy to throw out is how are you feeling? Or what's going on for you today? How, do you, how are you showing up today? What's, what's important about that for you right now? And this is where, I mean, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more right now, mm -hmm. the, the cards, this is where, the cards come in really easily. Um, we have teams now in, in certain companies where they got a box of our cards and uh, they, they use it as a check-in every morning. Mm -hmm. So basically they, they talk about, and we can, we can play around with this in a bit, uh, Jacqueline. Yeah. Uh, but they basically talk about things that, uh, that are not related to work, that are not related to the action part. They talk about things that are related to how they're feeling right now. And that's how you bind the team together because you're going away from all the, the head stuff and, and you're really getting to know each other. Okay, so let me understand this. So these teams, are these uh, um, companies or people who use your cards, what they do is they get together in the morning and they go over, they pick a card and they talk about how they feel. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's basically so, uh, what, what we're saying. What, what does that do? So, uh, um, if you start immediately by actioning, so let's, let's just go with uh, what, uh, what happens when you don't, right? So if you start immediately like, what's the plan? How are we going on? 
you may have skipped over something that is really relevant. Someone may have had a, a very profound moment, um, whether negative or positive in their lives, and needs to settle down first before they come in. We are not robots. We're working together as human beings. And so when we want to do any work, it's important to first establish a connection. So when you talk about feelings, for example, if I ask you, how was your weekend? Or, you know, was there, what was profound about your weekend? You start sharing something that comes from, from a deeper place than, uh, you know, I got my shopping list done and I, I went for a coffee. Because no, I had, a, I had a beautiful conversation with my wife and uh, she had this and this. Or I saw my children and they said this to me and it broke my heart. Or whatever it is, but it's, it creates, a, it establishes a deeper connection. Right. I, I, I really love that because when you are explaining that, it gets me to think to this visualization that we, whenever you do that every morning, you are like humanize your workplace. You know, it's not yes. only just about finding or achieving goal for the day or to tick your to-do list. But if first thing first is to acknowledge everyone that we all are matters. We are human beings. Yeah. We have emotions. We have feelings. So yeah, you said the magic word, humanizing the workplace. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. So how are and you? I think, I, I think, oh yeah, so you, you want to do, you want to play around with it and um, yeah. we can focus on you or we can focus on your business? Uh, probably, I, I don't know, let's, let's, I put myself on. You know what's really funny okay. about the cards? The moment I ask about anything, it goes back to you anyways. So this is, uh, this is where yeah. we just play around, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm just going to ask you a very simple question, Jacqueline, and, and it might right. create a little bit of a, a challenge. Okay. So, so here we go. I would like you to select uh, the one card that you see in this deck that gives you the, the biggest challenge. So there are 24, 23 plus 1, which is 24. So 24 I... Cards. So three cards. And, and just for the viewers, uh, each card explains a different human emotive drive. They are not emotions, but they unlock the key to, to getting your emotions. So uh, let's just give an example. This one is appreciate and connect. I'm sure it's Hang on. appreciation and re recognition. Keep on talking Sorry. So I can enlarge you. Okay. Yeah, appreciation and recognition. And normally, so right now the words are on it. We also have them without words. Uh, the idea is that we connect with the visual part of it first because that, that kind of skips the brain. So we actually go straight into the feelings. Right. That's where oh. the power sits. So the, the, the question for you is pick one card that you are really challenged on. Challenge means like uh, I'm, I'm challenged to establish that into my life. In, uh, in your life, yeah. Okay. The biggest, the biggest challenge in your life right now. Okay, so that's like I'm unzipping myself. Exactly. So three, yeah? So perhaps you would like to explain while I'm looking at this, why three? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I just asked you one actually. Just oh, one. one. Oh, okay. One. <laughs> why so it should be rather quick. It should be rather quick. Okay. Uh, I just, All so right. the viewers, Jacqueline has done these cards before. I don't think you've ever received this okay, question I think, before. Yeah. Um, at the moment, perhaps I'm actually torn in between these two, but um, I just want to share these two. Um, at the moment, I'm pretty much challenged in this one, play and fun, and fun. Yeah. because of the current situation. But at the same time, I think I'm also having this one, I'm challenged, order and structure. Why? So that's, that's interesting, right? Because they seem like polarities. So you're challenged on both the structure and the having fun part. Exactly. Yeah. So, so my next question would always be is to tell us a little bit more about that. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, which one? Do I need to choose one or I have to explain both? Well, maybe I it's the same story. Probably. Um, when you say that the polarity of it, that's exactly how it is because um, this one, the play and fun is because the restriction that we are having at the moment um, be, prior to this pandemic, I can go out as when and where that I want to, but now uh, the, the, there's this bubble of uh, 
sort of like fear that mm. if I were to continue with that kind of uh, activities of mine, I might be exposed to, yeah, well, everyone knows what, right? Um, yeah. At the same time, I, I, well, well, when everyone is also having the same, the same thought, um, the, we are no longer be able to go out together and uh, meet as per usual. So play and fun is quite challenging at this point of time. And you might be thinking, can you be play and fun in the house? No, it's not the same, okay? If you do it with your friends and others outside, right? And at the same time, this order and structure, because I feel overwhelmed, um, overwhelmed in a sense that there are so many things that um, I have to, I have, I, or, I, or, or rather I must do in order for me to, yeah, I'll borrow the word pivot. <laughs> uh, pivot some to pivot some of my my business offering, mm -hmm. and I'm yet to find out the the way, or even I don't. I can't even see my end goal yet. All I know now is that I have to be adaptable enough for the uh, adaptable in this new way of doing stuff. Um, but have I? Do I have a clear idea on what to do in my business? Uh, I don't have it yet for at this point of time. I sort of like, I have a blurry idea, but execution wise at this point, of time, I'm also at the same time bogged down with the, or, or the nitty gritty of life. And um, having been confined in the house, so I have to take care of my personal life as well. So in that kind of thought, that I feel I, I, I'm quite challenged in terms of order and structure. Yeah. And, and now let's check what happened with Omar, shall we? Yes. So Omar, a just card. a question to you. What, what did you hear from Jacqueline and did you feel that you learned something about her that you didn't really know? And you know each other quite well, so this will be interesting, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's pretty much um, that wraps up. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, describes what Jacqueline's condition right now. I think she's been able to uh, describe it really well. Um, yeah, she's been um, exploring her free spirit before this uh, COVID shutdown, uh, lockdown, uh, you know, going off on her own and stuff like that. And um, at the same time, uh, now she can't do it. So she's, it is a, is a big challenge uh, in, uh, in trying to enjoy her freedom and also in trying to explore um, cope with the situation. So that's pretty much, uh, I think, describes um, Jack. But really, when she was going on with that, <laughs> um, I couldn't help but think, but think about um, this topic, um, yeah. uh, Martin, because what, I, what I'm looking at is, when you look at connections, right, we're talking about building connections for, um, uh, that would help improve your business, because we're talking about if people are more connected in the organization, the business would improve because they, yeah. they work better and stuff like that. So actually what I was thinking about is um, if you extrapolate this, if you, if you think on a bigger scale, really this is what's missing at a global level or even at a family level. If you think mm -hmm. about it, at a family level, people are getting more um, isolated uh, because um, you could be sitting at a dinner table and everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah. There's no connection anymore. In fact, people don't even sit down and eat together anymore. There's an internet <laughs> connection in between usually. Yeah. And, and um, if you look at the situation in the US where you talk about racial tensions, yeah. and it's really because of the lack of connections. Yeah. Uh, you know, and when people are connected, everything changes. So yeah. I think in Malaysia, we're really very fortunate. Um, for instance, I've just moved to a new apartment. And I was just, as Jack was talking, I'm, I'm, you know, I wasn't really fully paying attention to exactly what she's saying because I, this, this whole con, the, the whole topic of this conversation just took me on another, uh, on another uh, thought process. And I was just thinking that we are so harmonious here in Malaysia because as I moved into this apartment, the, we're doing some uh, renovation work and stuff like that. The, the guys who's doing the construction work are, Heck, I don't even know what they are. They're, they're kind of like a Indian Portuguese mix kind of stuff. 
and then we've got the cabinet guy who's Chinese, and then we've got the wiring guy who's Malay, and uh, we're all speaking a common uh, language without even thinking about who's whom. Um, yeah. You know, because somehow in Malaysia, we're more connected. We're more connected with the commonalities of food and, um, uh, and, uh, and traditions uh, and the things we, that we share. I, I, I don't know how, you know, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because I, a lot of things are flooding in my head right now and I'm just realizing that uh, really the connection is, is something that we overlook. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, people can be living in the same house, but it's just not connected. It's so important. And, uh, yeah. and, and can you imagine when you go to work, you're all living your own, you're bringing your own bubble of, uh, of your own life into the work environment and everybody's working in their own bubbles and trying to work together. But you've got to burst that bubble and form that connection. Yeah. And I can see how something like this, a ritual like this, uh, where you talk about how your weekend was or your day was before and uh, putting it all on the table, and coming to an understanding of how each other is feeling, how that actually forms a connection. Yeah. And when you have that connection, you can then move on to other stuff. And that's and actually exactly, what we, then exactly right. how this card will help. And also, I like it when Martin can also uh, Martin also mentioned that it can be done uh, you, for yourself as well. Am I right, Martin? Yeah. This works. Like, I mean, it works for human to, beings. Yeah, <laughs> so. we have, we have to start from uh, the individual the individual level before we even um, use it for other for others. Yeah, when right? we when you see how when we run workshops with these cards, uh, even though we have, for example, twenty people in the room, uh, the first questions we ask at the table is share a little bit about yourself by using the cards. Yes. And um, then we suddenly see that people tell stories, even though they've worked with each other for such a long time, they share stories that they've never dared to share with each other before. And uh, I've heard stories about bullying, about body shaming, about, uh, you know, difficult relationships. And they are eventually fantastic stories. They may feel like scars on us and it might feel hard to share, but eventually the response that it evokes in people is one of, yeah. oh my God, I didn't know that's what you were all about. I, I see you in a different way now. Right, yeah. I've been to the workshop quite a number of times, in fact, facilitated workshop as well. And I can, I've, I've seen it uh, through my eyes, very own eyes, how they have been. It's much more easier with tools rather than talking it from a very conceptual perspective because some people are not introspective enough. So, but with this tool, it's pretty much easier for them to even connect it, connect that, um, the question to, to themselves. So my, okay, before, I know because it's another process after I have selected the two cards just now, but let me acknowledge our audience. Um, okay, we have a comment from Pauline. This is Martin's good friend. <laughs> Very good friend. Housemate. Very good friend and also housemate. <laughs> okay, she said, um, it will it will great to know where I can find out more about these cards. Uh, what is it and how it can further help my company, corporation or individual? It will be great to see Oma in the in the exercise and pick one card and share the fun. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. The next shall, meeting. We, shall we challenge Omar first and then I'll also explain a little bit more about the cards, yeah? Right. Yeah. So Omar, would you like to do the same? Just pick a card where, which is the biggest challenge for you at this moment. Biggest challenge for me? Okay. Uh, is, the problem is I don't have a card. Oh yeah. So um, <laughs> let me see if I can help you there, yeah? Yeah. Hang on, let, let me find out where my mouse is. I didn't well, do, do you have that, Do you have that in a PowerPoint where, where we can share I, screen? I yeah. do. Yeah. So let me see if I can find them here. Okay, this is going to be interesting. So the idea is to pick a card uh, that I find as a challenge. Okay. Exactly. Well, there are many questions actually, Omar, but uh, today I think Martin is going to use a different technique. Yes. Um, so yeah. indeed, um, of course, what we, you were just saying, Jacqueline, earlier is it is about asking the right questions. Right. Um, and today, um, I have asked a question about the challenge because it creates a very nice topic to talk about, um, but you can ask so many different things. I think, uh, Jacqueline, I need to have permission to share my screen. 
Yeah, you you can share the screen now. Um, advanced sharing options, uh, all participants. Okay, you can share now. All right. So there we go. And this is nice for the participants oh, wow. too. Um, <laughs> is it clearly visible? So Omar, you just have to to widen your eyes. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I know I got squinty eyes. Um, <laughs> So each card has four pictures, right? Yes. And so I understand. I... Oh, hang on. Let me do it this way. So you can see a clearer um, edge around it. Is this, uh, is this a better view for you? Yeah, I can see the cards. Uh, and each card has four pictures. That's what I can see. Correct. Okay, so and what do I do bit. now? So now pick one that you feel you're, uh, you're challenged on today, right now. That I'm challenged on? Yeah. Okay. So and whilst me... you're picking, let me explain a little bit more about the, the cards. So the cards originate from the Netherlands. Um, they have been designed by a, a company called BRND, and um, they are uh, part of a big research that was done for the last uh, 10 years or so already into what, what moves human beings. And it started as a branding effort because they wanted to know, you know, when we talk about emotions and how do we quantify that, how do we relate that. So if you want to know more about the cards, there's a website called 23plus1.org. Perhaps you can type it, Jacqueline, to yeah, we'll the go. audience. Yeah, we'll it now. Okay, so when you say challenge, uh, Martin, are you saying that, um, let's say I pick one that says um, uh, fit and sportive. So when you say challenge, uh, is a challenge that I'm not able to be fit and sportive or is a challenge to do those things? That's up to you to define, no more. Oh, okay. So pick a card that, that, I, that appeals to me. Right. right. Uh, okay. So uh, and this is the beauty of the card. So let me just give a bit of a background because some people yeah. think, oh, is this a profiling tool? No, it's not. All the 24 cards are part of you already. So there is no, uh, it's like, oh, you have more of this. So you are... Um, MBTI, whatever score, uh, it doesn't work like that. You have them all, but you can of course put an emphasis on one versus the other. You can be challenged with one more than the other. And sometimes you can be challenged with one and also find it the most satisfying card in the whole deck. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay, um, well, let me just just pick uh, creative and fantasy. Ah, nice. Okay, let me let me just quickly find that one. Yeah. And enlarge it for everyone to to see. That's a very oh. Well, first of all, the reason I picked this uh, is um, the word creative always appeals to me. If I see the word creative, I I I, um, I zoom in on it. Uh, the yeah, it's just um, it's just one of those things that are. Uh, that attracts my uh, my attention. So creative and fantasy. I'm um, um, recently what I've been doing is uh, during this COVID period is that I've been writing more articles and I've been exploring my my the creative side of my uh, artwork because I do some drawings and stuff like that. So um, and for the past few weeks I've not been doing it uh, partly because of this of this move from one apartment uh, from one place to another uh, so that has stalled and um, so when I see the word creative I'm just reminded of the fact that I'm supposed to do some uh, some drawings and articles and I haven't been doing that um, at the same time uh, I have this fantasy of uh, hopefully it turns into reality <laughs> not hopefully it's got to turn into reality of yeah. taking my kids to um, to watch uh, New Year's Eve or to experience New Year's Eve at the Sydney Harbour Bridge, you know. Oh. So when it, when the clock strikes midnight, um, the fireworks go off. So and so that picture of the fireworks has uh, uh, attracted my attention. So that's yeah. foremost in my mind right now. Uh, oh. Being creative and having this fantasy of uh, of being at the Sydney Harbour Bridge to, uh, to to greet the new year. Yeah. And, and to make it more meaningful, my why is why is this so important to you? That your creativity. Why is this so important to me? Um, I think, well, think right. 
creativity has always been um, something that I feel I uh, something that I feel that we don't do enough of. We tend to consume instead of create, and um, so we, we we read, we look at things. But what is amazing is when we're able to create. Like for instance, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I draw and I do yeah. write articles. And a lot of times it's not, it's not premeditated, which means that if I were to think about what to draw or to write, it, it's, it, it, uh, I, get, I get stuck because I get into this um, convoluted way of thinking because I'm very analytical. You know, should I draw this, should I write this, uh, and stuff like that. So what I do is I just pick up a pen and let's say if I were to draw, I would have a general idea of what I want to draw. And then when I start drawing, I'm, I'm just um, fascinated by what comes out of it. Right. You know, and it's not just me. It's just anyone. Uh, you know, from nothing, suddenly something comes out on a piece of paper. So that you just created that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know how to describe this, but that feeling that, that the thought of, from nothing to something is, uh, is amazing. A second ago, there was nothing, and then suddenly you created it. So creativity has always been intriguing to me, you know, when people create stuff. It's not just me. Yeah, so that's why the word creativity always attra is, uh, is always attractive to me. Lovely. Yeah. So it's a satisfaction in, in, in reaching that place. I'm sorry? If there's a satisfaction for you in reaching that, that moment of creating. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, because cre creativity is like magic. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's basically magic. If you look at what children do, uh, give them a, a pencil and paper and they come out with stuff and it was all in their head and then they created it. Yeah. Lovely. So, so now let's ask the question uh, back to you, um, Jacqueline. Yes. Did you learn anything? I mean, we we all know that uh, Omar is uh, pretty creative. Mm -hmm. uh, did you learn anything new from what he shared? Well, I know that already. Uh, but what I've learned from observing uh, Omar's explaining those uh, cards or that card is he has. It has got a real deeper meaningful connection to Omar. Mm. Yeah. Because as he was as as you were explaining it, Omar, I can feel because I know you for ten years, I think that's good enough for me to know you better. Um, it gives you the focus on what is exactly meaningful for you in 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 the in that sense, based on the card that you, you have selected. So again, I think this is um, referring back to what we mentioned earlier, building meaningful connections um, is to find those that, that points, that softer point, but yet pow powerful point in yourself um, in order for you to be able to relate further and to find meaning in the action that you do hours after or if it's in your situation if in the office after you have done this then um you know how can you continue on doing your task after that yeah Omar's creating a Omar... connection with his cats yeah i can hear that yeah <laughs> yeah not so, in my room so um yeah I, I, that's what i got it's, it's pretty much um confirming <laughs> or amplifying what i've known about omar and i can yeah. feel that yeah, and this is the this is the fun part of this. Uh, we sometimes get people in the room that don't know each other, and within five minutes they're sharing yeah. things that they would never share, even with their husband or wife. Is that yeah. Is that um, so uh, that raises a question. Um, you know, not everybody's going to have those cards. So, what can people use? What can people do besides using those cards to get connected? Um, I think Martin is frozen, but uh, Martin mentioned that earlier, very much earlier. Um, around um you know that that questions what's relevant at that point of time uh, asking the right questions will be the good um the, the, the good the starting way. point for you to 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 start as in how can you build more connections so martin um yeah, yeah. you were frozen earlier so perhaps you'd like to answer um omar's question 
Sure. Uh, I didn't get his question, so uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I have a bit of an internet connection. Yeah, let me repeat the question. So not everybody is going to have those cards. Um, okay, Martin's frozen again. Martin, you're back. I am back. It should be back for a while. Okay. Yeah. So not everybody is, uh, is going to have those cards, right? Yeah. So I, and I was asking, what can people do to get connected? And Jack mentioned about asking questions, which was what you met you uh, alluded to earlier. Uh, so my question now is, what kind of questions can people ask? Okay. Uh, yeah, so these, these, these are coaching questions, I guess, you know. And, yeah. um, you mentioned about that too earlier. About, because I asked the same question, Marsh, earlier around what kind of questions. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. So I would like to also acknowledge the 23plus1.org in the website itself. It tells around creating meaningful business through positive drives. So I think the key words here, positive drives, is relevant to um, to the individual itself, personally, uh, what drives you. Because hearing from Omar earlier, and in fact, when I was explaining my, my cards, um, I went deep into what really drives me. Although that's challenging for me at this point of time, but why I chose that two cards as my, what challenged me at this point of time is because that two cards has got a very... Uh, relevant, um, how do you say, um, relations to what I want to achieve um, in my life at this point of time because of the sit current situation that we are in. So Martin, I was telling the, our audience about uh, the 23plus1.org and I, what I like about this card is that, is that it, it is actually based on research, like years of research, right? Yeah. And yeah, um, sure. it's it's proven, it's a proven uh, research um, and it's a combination between uh, science and um, can I say neuroscience, neuroscience, psychology as well, oh, of course. Yeah, to the extent where they have put people into MRI scans to see what happens when they yeah. show certain images. So yes, uh, neuroscience, science too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I guess what I need to add to this is uh, eventually the cards are just a box of cards. Yeah. They are a tool. And so if you do not have the cards with you, one thing that I would recommend you to do is ask questions that you normally, where you normally stop. And you probably already know those questions. Uh, so basically, instead of asking why, ask what. And then yeah. when you hear something that sounds like, oh, that might be a little bit like I'm going too far. Just ask the question. Uh, actually, Jack, you're good at this. Now I know why you do this. Because every now and then, uh, you know, I, I'm in uh, some of the groups that Jack is in as well. Every now and then she'll, she'll toss out a question, <laughs> a weird yeah. question, uh, yeah. you know. Now I know why you do this. You've been Martin's co coachee. <laughs> no, it's just because I think part of it is really around the intention around wanting to know more. It's, listening the the hidden meaning out of some explanation and if you don't get the meaning um that that's why you get clarification by asking questions so i like to do that um and i think this is really a powerful thing that you say jacqueline it this is not about you wanting to know something to be right yes so make a difference there. If you ask yourself and you keep in your mind like, oh, am I trying to be right here? Am I trying to prove a point here to someone? Then you're not asking the right questions. Yeah. Just be curious and, and, and wonder what's going on for this person. And even if it's the person that is closest to me, uh, what else is there, right? Don't be afraid to ask the questions that yeah. may sound challenging. Yes. And it's, it's, it's really addictive if i can tell um that because because um when you are trying to get the 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 information that is not spoken or rather getting the clarification and you got it it feels like oh wow that's so amazing you know yeah. you 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 have the clarity around it so that's why i like to ask that question it's out of curiosity yeah. Body really class you... in Malaysia, busy body. You want to know more? Yeah. So we yeah, have really some you... uh, we have some cultural oh, yeah. expectations, right? Sometimes we think like if we speak like that, oh, then we are too nosy, or I 
you know, I'm not supposed to. Uh, but you really, you want to know because you care about the person, then, then don't be afraid to ask. And the person might even appreciate you asking the question. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I ask questions because I, I'm, I would like to learn more uh, from that person, especially when a person that I know has got a lot of these experiences, so I go deep. But of course, sometimes I do experience that I, I realize that I tend to go um, overboard sometimes, especially when there's no permissions, like all of a sudden asking like deep questions. So I have to accept the fact that not everyone is comfortable to entertain those curiosity. Yeah. 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 And really, um, forming connections is the basis of communication, right? Or the other way around, you know, I mean, uh, you know, to start a conversation, to start a relationship, you just form a connection. And, um, and uh, in Malaysia, it's so easy. Uh, that there's one uh, traditional way of asking, which is, Sudamakan, have you eaten? You know, that's yeah. a, that by itself, right? Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's as simple as that. It's as it simple is. as that, right? To form connections, just by asking a question that, um, uh, into what the, the, the other person has been up to or what they think. That's it. Yeah. And you are asking questions around a similar cultural uh, constraint. So you, uh, you ask this because you're from a similar culture. Of course, the questions change when you are not aware of the other person's culture. And that's when, uh, you know, you need different kinds of questions. And sometimes, like Jacqueline said, permission. It's not in every culture it's so easy to or not allowed to be asking questions of this nature and in other in, you know in in western cultures mostly these are questions that are a bit more common although it depends on your culture there too uh, i like our topic today is also partly because uh, a lot of time i mean referring to the topic of uh, today's topic um, you mentioned about um, if the lockdown has shown us anything, it is that humans are constantly, constantly seeking meaning and connection. How then can we use this search for meaning and connection to renew and boost our business? Now, a lot of time talking about pivoting or renew or thinking about um, a different or charting a different direction of your business. A lot of time we think of the techni technicality part of it, ROI, cash flow, cash flow, um, see I'm so much of into this, um, <laughs> what is it again, um, uh, business plan, business model and stuff, I'm not saying that, that, that those are not important, those are important, but the underlying part of it, the most important part of it is what you are sharing with us, am I right to say that Martin? Yeah, but this is funny, right, um, a lot of people talk about uh, industrial revolution 4.0, and 4.0 is going to AI, it is going advancing, you know, we've already had automation, now what do we do next? But everyone seems to forget that the tools are just there to make our lives easier. So, so who's talking about us? Who's talking about the human beings? And eventually businesses are created, A, to serve a purpose. And so the, it's, yes, it is to make a profit, but if you don't have an impact on someone's life, then why are you actually there? So, yeah, and if it's through the people that is part of your business, or maybe you're just alone and you're impacting other people, you guys are part of the social entrepreneurship group, so you know all about this. It is all about leaving an impact, and that's why it's so important that we don't really don't forget about the human beings in our business. Right, interesting. So we, that should be the first thing first before moving on into any, any other things, right? Um, Martin, I have one last question for you, at least from me. Um, I'm not sure about Omar, but you mentioned here about the founder of Happiness Dojo. Uh -huh, yes. Tell us more about that. So Happiness Dojo is a community. And let me, uh, let me bring you back one more because the question I never answered earlier on uh, how can people find out more about this. Well, one is 23 plus one.org. The, the website is mentioned. Okay. Uh, and the other one will be ideascape.com.my. The website currently is, uh, is work in progress. We will have it live very soon. We're working hard on it. But this is where people will be able to find more about how we can help you using the cards. Like I said, it's a tool for us. So we have sessions such as, uh, you know, a why discovery session. 
or being, building more meaningful connections or even building your brand using the cards. And that kind of depends on where you are as a team. Maybe you want to do it for research instead. Mm. So that's part one. And then the, the other part is the happiness dojo. Also work in progress right now. So this is very early on. You guys are, uh, you know, you're part of something that's starting. Happiness Dojo is really me building a community of people who are using these cards. Community. Um, ah, okay. And that means trainers, coaches, practitioners, consultants, brand strategists, um, people who use it in their business, in the HR function to get better communication. What we do, for example, which is really fun, is we use these cards to have conversations with our new hires before we hire them. So we ask them to put some cards down, how they think our business is, looks like. And then we ask them to put cards down for how they describe themselves. And then we look at the overlap and, and where they can fit in and where they cannot fit in or where they see themselves fit in. It creates a very different conversation than looking at your CV and, and, and at your resume and looking at, okay, you've got the following qualifications. It doesn't tell me much about who I have at the other side of the table. And this immediately pierces down to what, what matters to you. Yeah. Right. I'm um, hearing from you. Actually, I have one more question, if you're okay, Martin, because sure. I know you <laughs> time already. Because I was part of the pro project before. Uh, perhaps in a um, quick one, you might want to share with our audience the uh, success story of, uh, of um, 23 plus one, uh, where, you know, those those clients that you have done and how was it done? Uh, success story, okay, I, I, I missed your point. Um, which one shall I pick because there's quite a few good ones. I think a very quick one, we did one with Petronas, which uh, actually not Petronas, Petronas has a social enterprise unit called CPLAP and they were looking at the, a, they were already very committed and very passionate about what they are all about. And when they came in, they kind of all thought that they knew. And it, in essence, they did, but they had never really spoken about the essence. So when we went through the workshop and they all got talking and they all got sharing, they went to the nitty gritty of what the values are that they put behind it and what motivates them to, to push this through. And they came out saying actually we didn't know much about what we were all about now we know mm. and now it's almost like an unspoken thing but it, and it comes out really naturally when you ask anyone they will they will throw it out so naturally like we're about one two three four we hire for one two three four they they know exactly what they're all about so that for me that gives the most satisfaction uh and another one would be just having people at the table breaking down in tears uh, and saying i did I didn't know I was going to share this today. And, and the other's like, oh, you go, you go, you go. Uh, that's, uh, that's like a personal one, so. All right, so we are at the end of our session. Omar, would you like to say something? Yeah. Omar, you are muted. Yeah, um, yeah, I, you know, the more I think about it, the, uh, the more it makes sense that uh, connection is the basis of um, why we're here. You know, really, uh, when you talk about businesses, why are we, you know, pe people kill ourselves at work, even, right? At work, um, we're working in the same company, we compete, we climb over each other's heads, but it, and then we have a miserable time going to work, you know, but at the end of the day, it's all about spending time with our, with our colleagues and, and uh, having a connection with them. And that in itself, I, I think can be so satisfying, right? While you pursue this common business interest. Uh, of making profits and stuff like that. Because if you don't have the connection among your colleagues, uh, you're gonna have a miserable time at work. So um, yeah, all this discussion is really fundamentally about uh, relating to, from one, from one human being relating to another human being. That, that's all, that's what I, I'm getting out of all this. And I, I think that is, a, that is an area that is so much overlooked. Yeah. You know, while we pursue profits and business plans, like what Jack was saying, and, all of these other business ideas, strategies, and stuff like that, we forget about the human connection, right? And, and bosses, uh, they, they screw up their, their, their subordinates for not meeting goals and stuff like that. When it's all about connection, we forget about that completely. So thank you for uh, bringing this up.
uh, and, it, and it's also a reminder for me uh, because I'm also reflecting on my 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 relationship with my kids, <laughs> you know, and they've all grown, and uh, and the connection is getting less and less, uh, you know, because he, everyone's leading their own life. So yeah, so I just want to acknowledge that. Thanks, Omar. And really, just to add on on Omar, um, it will be much more for organization out there. If you would like to know more about this, it will but it will be much more effective if you are facilitated, meaning there's facilitated to to do that for you perhaps one or, uh, or twice and then you can do it on your own. Why? Because it seems like it's very easy. It is easy as how easy you want it to be easy. But um, at the same time, we also look at the, we need to look at the effectiveness out of it. So um, I think uh, to have a facilitator or a few facilitators to do it for your team, I think that will make a huge difference in terms of um, how can you use the tools effectively and most important like Martin said is this is just a tool but most importantly how, what will be the the uh, um, findings out of those uh, activities that you are doing with your staff uh, Martin? yes there's nothing much more that I can add uh, very well said so um, yeah, if you're an individual and you want to explore more, I would welcome you. Um, just message me at uh, info at ideascape.com.my or um, if you want to give me a ring, my profile is on LinkedIn. You can find me there. So uh, reach out and uh, discover what it's all about. All right, so thank you so much, yeah, gentlemen. And also thank you so much, uh, our viewers. We have quite a number of uh, viewers today. Thank you so much for uh, dropping by and also be part of the discussion all right uh, you know how to if you want to know want to know further about the about uh, martin and also his company and also the tools you know how to get him all right so thank you so much everyone we'll see you on monday on monday we have our usual oh sorry i have session on saturday with uh, ssen uh, sabah social enterprise uh, Social Enterprise uh, Entrepreneurs Network, right? Uh, we will have a personality, um, a second personality this time around. A very inspiring lady. And uh, I'll see you on uh, today. But on Monday, we'll, as usual, we have our men's brief. Um, on Monday, what will be our topic? Yeah, what will be our topic, Jack? Something to do with pants. Pants? Uh, men's okay. brief on <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who wears? Yeah, just, just wait for the poster that Jack comes out with. Comes okay, out give with you the. Yeah. yeah, who wears pants in the relationship or in the family, right? So okay, goodbye everyone. Thank you so much. So we'll sign off now. Goodbye. Okay, we're no longer live. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you, Jacqueline and Omar. That was uh, yeah. It. Thank you. It's, a, it's such a reminder. Mm. Um, yeah, it's such a reminder. That's a, such a good point. Uh, be, uh, Actually, I, I believe there's another step of that, right, Martin? But we can. <laughs> what is that? After we have selected the two card or one card, and then the, this there was supposed to be a step after that, or no? Uh, no, I mean, it really depends on what you want to achieve. And today I just wanted to get you to answer a bit of a provocative question. So, uh, uh, this is really this. good, Omar. I've been using this. But mm -hmm. you, yeah. But um, I think it will be interesting for your stories, uh, Omar. For, convers so for uh, conversation starter as well, especially when it comes to very deep deep uh, top, or discussions um, yeah. deep no reflection about 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 that person about himself or herself or the individual but the way you're asking the question seems a bit sophisticated though i mean because um if you if somebody just picks up the cards they're not going to be able to use it no. unless they are yeah you unless need a bit of training in what sort of questions do you ask right what do you do when you feel that moment of ah oh, can i ask this uh, how do you create permission? How do you create a safe space? That sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. And that's what, of course, we do in trainings. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah. so thank you guys. Uh, and uh, good luck with, uh, with the show.
<laughs> Make it more professional, man. You guys have everything that it takes. You just need to. Yeah, no, serious. I mean, yeah, I was yeah. just explaining to so what, Pauline. Yeah. What would you, yeah. So what would what would be the couple of things you suggest, uh, Martin? Um, get the people that speak. Uh, you know, informed. You don't need to have all the questions out. That's not important at all. But you need to get them like. Look, we're, we're preparing the session half an hour before. Mm. You know, this is your topic. Uh, we will let you speak about your topic. We will interject with questions that come up with us. This is the role that Omar has. This is the role that Jacqueline has. Mm. Um, all these kind of things. Prepare your room, you know, all that kind of stuff that some people may know, some people okay. still won't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that's one it. thing. Yeah, I actually so, think I thought about a specific invitation uh, right now, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now and then the other thing would be to, what's, what's next? Because mm -hmm. I love your topics. So what's next for me? Where can I find out more about them? Can I read something more about them? You have mm -hmm. a potential platform. You know, if you build a website and you throw some advertisements on by people from Malaysia who you know, who love being seen. Yeah. You, you write this into a blog story that what you've learned about Marta, you connect to his business, you say, every time someone links from my website, I get a percentage from you. Mm, you mean All that right. stuff just works. You mean after the session and then there's like specific uh, what, call to action for our audience to get to know more about that person. Yeah, if you watch any previous episodes, go to our website. If you want to know more oh, about... Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, and I'm, I'm not uh, coming up with this. Uh, this is not an excuse, but uh, just to have, have, help you understand, when uh, Jack and I have started this, or rather when Jack started this, the whole idea was just to get used to being on air. In fact, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, when Jack first started it, she kept saying, uh, you know, this is for me. I don't care if anybody's watching. She kept saying that. But yeah. as the viewership grew, we both went, wait a minute, people are watching. You know, we got 2,000. Our record 2,000 views. Exactly. Yeah, for your uh, Sabah show. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. it's just the right time for you to actually uh, give us a nudge or rather a kick in the butt and say, hey, we got to step it up even more, you know, make yeah, it more Continue to be our coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. No, but this is, you know, I see you guys have something that is potentially uh, like it's a little gem. You just created a little gem, but it's like a, it's a diamond in the rough. Um, now shave a few of the edges off and uh, I'm doing this on the side as well with uh, our Simply Enough business, the food business. Mm. We started a YouTube channel two months ago. Uh, we had YouTube but it was like 13, 13 followers or something and we never put anything on, on there. We had no viewers and we are now at 1,050 viewers. Wow. But yeah, uh, no. But no, 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 subscribers, oh, not wow. viewers, subscribers. So YouTube, this is on YouTube. You. This is on YouTube. Yeah, but because simply enough, it's like well, known all over the world. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, well, not we really. We just had good exposure from from an influencer. That's oh, all. Okay. What is it called? Simply enough. Enak. Simply enough. Sedap, sedap, enough. Oh. Enough. So if you if you were to upload these videos to YouTube, mm. again, uh, this is this is percent. easy. Just get a bit of branding done, a simple logo, nice cover image, upload every single video that you have. You will start getting videos right away, like viewers and followers. And then you yeah, start thinking yeah, people. Be... Yeah, I, I, I put that in my to-do list for mm. three weeks already. <laughs> See? Okay, good. If Jazz got, if Jazz got it on the list, uh, it'll, it'll happen. <laughs> yeah, well, I put it, I know that it's just that, yeah. Okay. And and then and then do the cards. Card? Yeah, I do have cards. Oh, we need to do the two of you for what you're creating. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. One day we do coffee. We do a coffee session. Can can can. With yeah? you around, you facilitate. <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so I have to go now. I have to go. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah. Catch you later, guys. Thank you so yeah. much. All right. Yeah, Jeff, can you just stay on a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Martin. Yeah. This, um, I'm not 